We are now officially halfway through the Book of Boba Fett with Chapter 4, The Gathering Storm. My immediate reaction to the latest episode was that it had some good thematic stuff, some really fun, very Star Wars-y stuff, but that it could have been paced better. I was excited to see the flashback timeline catching up to The Mandalorian, where Boba finally meets Finnick Shand. There were certainly some enjoyable parts, but three quarters of the episode was made up of flashbacks that built towards events that we already knew the outcome of. I'm not sure we learned enough new information to warrant so much screen time given to the past, but let's dive in and see if we can figure out why that choice was made. We don't waste much time at all getting to Finnick. Boba has been alone in the desert for some time, wishing he could go back into Jabba's palace to reclaim his ship, but he can't do it alone. He sees pieces of events from the Mandalorian's fifth chapter and investigates to find Finnick dying in the sand. So he takes her to a modification parlor in Mos Eisley, where she is given cybernetics that save her life. I honestly don't mind the modifiers all that much, especially after learning about the real-life mod subculture they're based on. I at least understand the idea better. And when Boba brought Finnick to the modifiers, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But I felt like the montage lasted far too long. It had some fun ideas, the arm with swappable pieces is cool and all, but it went on for nearly 90 seconds just to tell us what we already knew, that Finnick Shand survives because of droid parts. I think that's my gripe with the pacing of this chapter, is that we spend half an hour in the past, and I have no problem with anything we're shown, but I don't think we needed 45 minutes to tell this story. I guess the length of the modification montage just shows us that saving Finnick's life was no easy feat, and purposefully leaving her cybernetics visible does tie in with the show's themes of healing both internal and external scars. Speaking of, when Finnick wakes up, Boba tells her the Black Melon will help her recover, that it takes some getting used to, but in time she'll come to crave it. I think that connects with Boba Fett and the Bacta. We've been talking about his healing sessions since the start of the series. Does he really need all that Bacta, or is he using it as a crutch? Phoenix straight up asks him in this episode about his internal damage, but we'll get to that. Chapter 4 is largely about the relationship between these two bounty hunters, the lives they led in the past, and the lives they hope to lead in the future. They both took orders from scug holes, as Boba calls them, and they both nearly died in the sand because of it. Fett explains his salvation from the Tuscans and how he was ready to give up bounty hunting. For the first time in his life, he was offered a chance to do something other than what he was raised to do. He saw other possibilities for himself, other aspirations outside of the values his father instilled in him. But he is still kind of tied to that past. He thinks he needs his armor to make him more persuasive. Without it, he believes he would be unable to just waltz up to Bib Fortuna and ask for his ship back. I don't personally buy that, I don't think he needs the armor to achieve his goals of becoming a crime lord, but I absolutely see where he's coming from. First, it's brand recognition. Boba Fett in his armor has a better chance at taking Jabba's throne than some scarred clone that randomly walked in. He's also feeling some guilt over the deaths of the Tuscans, blaming himself for the speeder bike attack. Maybe he thinks that if he had his armor, he would have been able to better protect them or that the gang wouldn't have attacked at all knowing who they were attacking. Finnick also suggests that there is more to that story, that the speeder bikes shouldn't have been able to take down a whole tribe of Tuscans. The pikes being involved makes sense and would make the present day war against them more personal. Finnick agrees to help Boba get his ship back in exchange for saving her life, and while they wait to assault the palace, they have a good chat. Finnick expresses doubt that Fett could lead his own criminal empire. She's basically where he was before the Sarlacc, unable to see a life outside of the one that she's chosen. She's set in her ways, even wearing the same outfit she wore nearly three decades earlier. But Boba has seen that it's possible to leave it behind thanks to the Tuscans. He didn't care about getting his armor back until now. He was happy to finally be with people who truly cared about him. You know, eventually, after they hit him with sticks and stuff. The series has always been about reinvention and change and the struggle to achieve it. Sometimes people need to be convinced that change is even possible, and that's where Finnick is at at this point. Together, they break into Jabba's palace, and again, this was a sequence I felt was a little long, but there was some very fun stuff in this sequence. The chef droid is my favorite. I loved him and was distraught to see Finnick slit his throat. 
I also enjoyed seeing an LEP droid for the first time in live action. But we saw that Boba is struggling to get back into the swing of things. He's been out of this life for years, for so long that even that little droid gave him trouble. Piloting the Slave One wasn't a walk in the park at first. I asked myself if he forgot how to fly it, and I think, yeah, he did. Once the ship is secured, Boba says it's in good shape, just a little rusty. If that's not a metaphor for him, I don't know what is. Finnick starts to warm up to her new friend, letting it slip that she would be open to working with him again, and agreeing to join him while he settles some scores. And we quickly wipe out the Kintan Striders. That was a very fun scene, but I definitely don't think we're done dealing with the murder of the Tuscans after what Finnick said earlier. Then we head to the Sarlacc pit, and we spend four minutes looking for Boba's armor, which we know isn't there, but it does lead to one of the most insane Star Wars moments I can recall in recent history. At some point in these last few weeks, somebody guessed on our After Show The Book Report, or maybe on Resistance Broadcast's Mando fan show, that Boba would drop a seismic charge into the Sarlacc for revenge. We talk about this show so much online and with friends that for the life of me, I cannot remember who made that guess or when, but I never in a million years would have bet money that it would actually happen. I loved that it did. But the scene that follows was probably the most important of the chapter. After Finnick insists Boba's armor has done its job and he shouldn't worry about getting it back, which I think is telling, they sit around their third campfire together. Finnick once again laughs off Boba's proposal to join him in forming a crime family, although she's clearly coming around. She tells him living with the Tuscans made him soft, and he says no, it made him strong. He learned that true strength doesn't come from your ability to inflict violence on others, it comes from loyalty, friendship, family, working for the betterment of all the people in your community, not just for yourself. That is so George Lucas, for the second week in a row, I'm reminded of a Lucas quote that says, The more I studied anthropology, it became very obvious to me that one of the most important issues humans have to deal with is that the group that cooperates are much stronger than they are when cannibalizing themselves, that allowing personal greed to overrun a situation is a serious negative, and that caring about people, trying to help other people, and to move the world forward in a more compassionate manner is the best way. Boba Fett may not have the Force, but we are seeing him move from the dark side to the light side. Back in the present day, it's announced that Boba has fully healed, so we might be done with the Bacta and the flashbacks? I kinda doubt it. Finnick makes that quip about his scars on the inside, and I still think he has some trauma to confront, especially surrounding his father. I believe there are more to those flashbacks, and while the series has largely caught up to the Mandalorian, there is still some story to see about his quest to reclaim his armor. Considering how this chapter ends, I think chapter 5 could have some past and present parallel storytelling. Jumping over to the sanctuary, we catch up with Black Kersantan, and I am so glad he's not just gone. He gets drunk and starts spoiling for a fight with some Trandoshans, which is fun on its own, but even more fun knowing the hatred between Wookiees and Trandoshans. Garza Fwip tries to calm him down by offering to wipe away his bar tab, and he says, nah, choosing to go ahead and rip that dude's arm off. A fun scene, but I think it shows Boba the kind of person Kersantan is, or at least can be. He's got a code, and that code is more important to him than money. Garza also mentions that his days as a gladiator are long gone. He's currently a Wookiee without a purpose, and so Boba offers him one. He continues to build his tribe with the people who have always had to serve the scug holes of the galaxy. Then we finally get to that dinner table scene from the trailers, which is treated very much like a mobster movie, even down to the music. Boba basically asks all of the three families to remain neutral in his conflict with the Pikes and stay out of his way. They all agree, after a scare from the Rancor. I doubt that neutrality will hold. I mean, it's not like Boba Fett can threaten them with a Rancor outside of the palace, right? Right? He's definitely gonna have to ride that thing into Mos Espa to exert some dominance. Speaking of things that are definitely going to happen, the episode ends with Finnick suggesting Boba hire some more muscle, and then Mando's theme kicks in, which gave me goosebumps. So I think it's safe to say Din will be making an appearance in the next chapter, which makes sense for the flashbacks as well. It's possible we're done with them, but I think we could see how Boba discovered his armor was with Cobb Vanth and then track it to Din on Tython in the past while actually hiring Din in the present. Maybe he'll hire Cobb Vanth too, that would be sick. 
So yeah, I found all of the present day stuff of the Gathering Storm to be good and exciting. I do think the flashbacks could have been paced better and cut down, but I can't complain too much when we got plenty of fun Star Wars-y goodness. Let me know what you thought of Chapter 4 in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with all our Book of Boba Fett coverage, and consider checking out our Patreon page for even more. We're releasing video reactions and audio commentaries for every episode as they release. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.